if you've been around guitar pedals, even just on the periphery for even a really nominal amount of time, you've most certainly heard of MXR pedals. And the history of the company goes well back into the 70s and there's some great videos done by guys like Josh Scott at GHS that really document sort of the historical context of MXR and what they brought to the table. But this video is not about the history of MXR. This video is about the top 10 pedals that they ever made and not only giving you my list of top 10, but also anchoring each one of those top 10 in the actual context of how they were used in popular music. So we're gonna play some actual sound clips of each one of these pedals as we go through the list so you can hear how they were used in popular music and what turned them into the iconic pedals that they became and still are. Let's do it. Now I know already that some of you are thinking there are some great MXR pedals that are still being made to this day and that's absolutely true. Jim Dunlop has done a great job of continuing the legacy of MXR, releasing new products that have become sort of cult classics, just like the MXR Carbon Copy, which has been a mainstay on a lot of boards for decades. But they also come out with new versions of the sort of reissue series of a lot of the classic MXR effects. I'm not discounting the quality of any of those. They've done a great job at doing that. But today we're really gonna focus on the MXR pedals that were done back in the 70s originally in Rochester, New York, and focus in on those best 10. Additionally, if you have a list of your own that you would like to put out there in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you places that you agree or disagree with my ordering, or if there's different pedals that you would propose or honorable mentions that you might make, feel free to put those in the comments as we go. Now number 10, the 10th best pedal that MXR ever made, which I think is undoubtedly still a great pedal to this day, is the MXR 6 band EQ. Now MXR still makes a version of this, but the original one back in the 70s was used by Eddie Van Halen, almost most notably, where you'd always have a six band EQ right up front. There was no foot switch. It was always on all the time. And it was really a part of his signature sound. And even if you looked at any of the touring gear that Van Halen used in the 70s, and a lot of this was actually documented and shown as part of an exhibit in New York, you could see that in the late 70s, he was using this on his rig and also many different incarnations of his rig up until the point that he started working with Robert Bradshaw and started going more rack based in terms of his approach to gear. This was most certainly of the classic Van Halen era, part of the sound on every one of those records and was certainly a part of any of the live sounds that you would have heard from Van Halen during that era. Now I'm gonna play for you a little clip that just gives us a sense of some of the distortion tones that Van Halen was getting back in the day, of course using sort of the vintage Marshall amps and kind of just doing the thing that we know Van Halen to do, kind of just getting those amps really cooking, getting natural distortion out of them, and of course using the Variac and in some cases having Jose Arredondo modding those amps. Really sounds great, but again, that six band EQ was always on all the time, no way to bypass it. That was certainly part of the sound. Check it out. <laughs> Absolutely a great pedal. Again, there's still a version of it made today, but Van Halen was certainly one of the early adopters of it and was certainly a mainstay on his rig for many, many years. Now let's move on to pedal number nine. Now this is a pedal that's still in existence today and is still actually very widely used and is very simple and still sounds great. It's none other than the MXR microamp. Now, a lot of guys like Andy Summers had been using these on his rig from the 70s just to use it as sort of a boost into the front end of a Marshall. But I think most recently, guys like John Frusciante on the By The Way album and also Stadium Arcadia were known to have used this pedal on their rigs, especially for live performances. So I wanna play a little bit of how John Frusciante is using it in a live performance. We're gonna hear this being kind of kicked in for a solo tone, and he's kind of going from just like a rhythm sound, and then you hear him go over that solo, kicks in the microamp, and that just kind of brings everything up a notch. Sort of like what a master volume would do if you just cranked up that master volume, just takes the whole sound and just elevates it. Sounds absolutely great, check this out. So 
that was John Frusciante using the MXR microamp as a boost. Again, absolutely great and also used by guys like Andy Summers and is still, again, a pedal made today by MXR. It's just one knob in the truth, but still sounds great and is a wonderful clean boost that many of us could benefit from. Now let's move on to number eight. Now number eight is kind of a sleeper and I don't really feel like it gets the credit that it deserves, but it's none other than the MXR analog delay. Now this was a very dark sounding delay, had a big AC cord that you had to power it with and wasn't exactly that practical for today's pedal boards. But back in the day, one of its most notable users was Andy Summers from The Police. And if you check out his Pete Cornish rig, where Pete Cornish will take all sorts of different pedals and basically incorporate them into one mega pedal board where all of the pedals are sort of integrated underneath sort of like a plywood frame you can see that andy summers used the analog delay and it replaced the echoplex that he had been using in a lot of his rigs before then because it had sort of that dark sound very analog it was a nice way to kind of get more practicality than what it would require in order to maintain all those tape echoes on the road and you can hear in this clip that it very much has that sort of self oscillation thing that analog delays are known for but really just sounds really close to the kind of the echoplex sound that we know him for but really just has a lot more practicality it sounds really nice and warm really nice and fat it really captured the vibe of the echoplexes and really just made that power trio just sound even bigger with of course sting and then having also stuart copeland on the drums just sounded incredible check out this clip So that was the MXR Delay, absolute great pedal, sounds great, nice and dark, kind of has a little bit of that tape echo vibe. Andy Summers certainly being a great endorser of that particular product and again using it as a part of his Pete Cornish rig. Now this brings me to pedal number seven. Now I always wondered what this pedal was when I had first heard it. As a young guitar student and wanting to learn Led Zeppelin tunes, I would often go to my guitar teacher and I'd ask him about effects or products that got these certain sounds. And when I wanted to learn the song Fool in the Rain, I was just absolutely mesmerized by that sort of spitty octave fuzz. I came to find out that it was the MXR Blue Box, which is my pick number seven. Sounds incredible. There was really nothing like it at the time. And you can really hear how unique it is when you're hearing Fool in the Rain. It just has this beautiful octave quality that's not quite like a Tycho Braid. It's just sort of like its own thing. And I really loved how unique it was. And just at the time, there wasn't anybody who was really using that sound in that way. And Jimmy Page was just such a pioneer. Not a guy that used a lot of pedals, but when you saw him use one, they were definitely things that made a statement. Check out this solo from Jimmy Page, Fool in the Rain, sounds incredible. So that was pick number seven. I think you can agree that this is a very unique pedal and it really sounded great in this context. I love what Jimmy Page did with it. It is an absolutely iconic solo tone. This brings me to pick number six. And this is sort of a, a tricky one to be able to identify because if you know anything about MXR phasers, there was a couple of different versions of them, a 45, a 90, and a 100. And they all had sort of different ways that they sounded. Some of them could have some overlap and there were some different subtleties and distinctions between them. And I think the 45 is my pick for this one because I would say it was probably the least popular of all the different phaser sounds, but also had a subtlety about it that could almost make it Univibe-esque. And some people would even sometimes mistake lower settings on a phase 90 for a phase 45. Now in this context, I think a great example of phase 45 in use is from the Sex Pistols and a song called Anarchy in the UK. And you can hear on this live performance that it comes in right at the point that the solo comes in. And it just kind of adds some wideness and sort of just some movement to the solo. And it's it's very subtle at what it does, but you can definitely hear that that phaser comes in and then comes off at the end of the solo when it goes back to some of the rhythm playing. Let's check out that song. I 
I love that tune from the Sex Pistols. Of course, they always brought so much energy to their performances. And when you can hear that face coming in the solo, you can definitely hear what it does to the sound, brings that width, and just brings a little bit more body to the overall sound. That's what the Phase 45 did. It was subtle. You could hear it, but not quite hear it, but when you had it off, you knew that you were missing something. And that's really what I think about the Phase 45. It could almost be univibey in what it did, very subtle. So that now brings me to pick number five, and in keeping with the whole phaser lineup of MXR, I'm gonna go next with the Phase 100 for my pick number five. Now this was not something that was widely used by a lot of professionals, but it was used by some, but I think the most notable of all of them was Jerry Garcia in The Grateful Dead. And I think a song that really demonstrates the use of the phaser really well as it relates to Jerry Garcia is in the song Sugary. It really just adds a lot of body, is sort of quintessential to that sound, and really just the movement that it creates and sort of just the intensity of a Phase 100 is really noticeable, I think, in this song. So we're gonna go to a version of it that was recorded in Mountain View in the late 80s, and I think you're gonna get to hear here what it really does and brings to the overall tone. Let's check it out. Sounded absolutely great. Of course, there were other users of the Phase 100, but I think as far as guitar icons, there's really nobody bigger than Jerry Garcia that I thought was using the Phase 100, or at least using it as a mainstay on the rig. Sounded absolutely great. I love this sound, and I love what Jerry did with it. Now, in keeping with the Jerry Garcia vibe, I'm gonna move on to my next pick, pick number four, which was also something that Jerry Garcia used as a mainstay on his rig, and it's nothing other than the Distortion Plus. Now, Jerry used this throughout his rig and really, I think, was sort of the exception to a lot of people. A lot of people now think of the Distortion Plus as being this really sort of hard edge distortion, but when I hear Jerry Garcia use it in the context of the song I'm about to play you, it really sounds nice and rounded, and, and I really think it's actually very a musical distortion pedal. Now the song I'm gonna play you is New Minglewood Blues, and I think you can really hear what the Distortion Plus is doing, not only in a rhythm context, but also in a lead context, and it just sounds really great doesn't sound like a pedal, actually has a pretty natural amp distortion. And I'm also gonna play for you another clip after this of Don Felder using the Distortion Plus because this was something that he used paired with a Tweed Deluxe when they recorded the One of These Night solos, which is often thought of as being one of the best guitar solos of classic rock history, along with stuff like Hotel California, although I don't know that they used a Distortion Plus on that, but they did use some MXR pedals, which we'll get to later. But I know for the solo tone on one of these nights, the Distortion Plus was rumored to have been part of that sound. And I think it absolutely sounds incredible. Sounds great with that Les Paul coming into the Distortion Plus, then hitting the front end of that Tweed Deluxe. So I'm gonna play both those clips back to back so you can really hear what they're doing. And just two really solid examples of how an MXR Distortion Plus was used in popular music. killer tones there. I mean, one of these nights, again, I've always loved that solo. And then of course, Jerry just making this thing sing. Of course, there's a lot of different songs that we could have chosen for the dead where Jerry is using a distortion plus. I just think that was a good example of how it sounds both in a rhythm and lead context. But again, plenty of other choices that we could have made there that would exemplify what the distortion plus does. 
Let's move on now to pick number three. And this is in keeping a little bit with the Eagles here with the MXR 117 flanger. Now I know that all of you are saying, well, of course Van Halen used it. And yes, Van Halen did use it. And we're gonna talk about some of those songs. But I also wanna talk about how it was used on the Eagles song, Life in the Fast Lane. Now in the studio, when it was recorded, it's rumored that this was actually all done with the tape machine and they created the flanging sound there. But when they went to take this song and bring it to a live performance, that they tried to use pedals in order to sort of reproduce those types of sounds. And of course, the MXR 117 flanger would have fit the bill perfectly and came out right around the time that they were touring this album. It wouldn't have been able to be something that would recreate those sounds. Even on some of the MXR manuals, you can see that Life in the Fast Lane is used as a sort of quoted sort of setting guide, and they'll show you how to reproduce that sound using the MXR flanger to do it. So I'm gonna play you a little bit of Life in the Fast Lane. Of course, it happens in the intro and in the outro, but we'll play a little section of that, and then I'll also play a little examples of Eddie Van Halen using it. Of course, he's the most famous user of the MXR flanger, has his own signature version of it, which you can still get today. So you get to hear both those examples, so you can hear two really poignant examples of this used in popular music and in two classic rock songs. So that was the MXR Flanger pick number three, an absolute great pedal, wonderful staple, and again, really defined two distinct sounds in rock music, people like the Eagles, people like Eddie Van Halen in Van Halen. Let's move on now to our final two. Now these could literally be interchangeable with how popular that they are. And this was a hard choice for you to make in order to distinguish which pedal went where. But I think for pick number two, I have to go with the MXR Dynacomp. Now this was an incredibly simple compressor, just two knobs, very, very abbreviated, but was widely used throughout the industry, whether it was studio guitar players or live guitar players. But I wanna share a couple of examples of where this was used in popular music and where we might be able to hear it if we're looking for MXR Dynacomps in practical use. Now the first one I can think of is through the band Little Feet and the guitar player Lowell George. Now Lowell was known in the studio to use 1176 compressors, but when they went out live, he would use a Dumble Overdrive Special in two different Dynacomps on the floor. Now you can hear in this song example that I'm gonna play for you in a minute, that it sounds very compressed. You can see that Dumble Overdrive Special just a little bit out of focus in the back, and you can see that 70s Strat that he's got, and he's just absolutely making this thing sing with lots of compression, absolutely sounds beautiful. But I'm also gonna play a couple of other clips. Another one that I'm gonna play for you is the song Walking on the Moon from The Police. Andy Summers, again, a big MXR fan, used the Dynacomp as part of his signature sound, especially live, in order to recreate those sounds of the album. And using the squish of that Dynacomp paired with his Telecaster, and then bringing that in for a little delay, perhaps even the MXR analog delay, as mentioned earlier, that was all part of his Pete Cornish rig. He was absolutely a big proponent of that pedal. And thirdly, and I think most recently of people that are using Dynacomps in the context of popular music was John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers in the song Under the Bridge. You can hear how squashed that is in the intro. It really is just one of the best examples of how compression is used in certainly 90s music, if not in rock music of all time. And I think this is another great example of how a Dynacomp compressor can sound in the context of a recording. And we're gonna get to hear a live interpretation of John using it with the Red Hot Chili Peppers so you'll hear all three of those clips. Enjoy the Dynacomp in the context of actual songs and music that we know and love.
So that was the Dynacomp, of course, all iconic pieces of music, all iconic artists. But that leads us to number one, which if you haven't already guessed it, is nothing other than the MXR Phase 90. Now this was a staple, again, of the Van Halen sound. He has a signature pedal from MXR that represents this Phase 90 sound, but also it was used by a lot of other iconic artists in addition to Eddie Van Halen. Some of the other notable artists that I can think of right off the top of my head are people like David Gilmour. This was definitely part of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. It was also used on Breathe, Have a Cigar. That album was definitely covered in Phase 90 from David Gilmour. Definitely really, really great applications in classic rock music where you had heard of Phase 90. Also, going back to the Eagles, we heard Joe Walsh using a Phase 90 when he switched to his solo from Don Felder when they're kind of trading off solos during the Hotel California solo section. So you can hear him coming in with that Telecaster, the phaser comes in, and that was most definitely on the live performances at least, recreating that phaser sound using the Phase 90, Joe Walsh and his Telecaster, getting that beautiful solo tone, undoubtedly, again, an MXR Phase 90. So let's hear those clips back to back so you can hear all these different examples, not only from David Gilmour, but Eddie Van Halen and Joe Walsh, and how that really just helps cement the legacy of what made Phase 90 so great. And I mean, gosh, when you're thinking about iconic songs, you, you have Eruption or Ain't Talking About Love, you got Hotel California, and then you got Shine On You Crazy Diamond. You have like three of the most popular iconic rock songs ever written that all include this exact same pedal. Pretty incredible for the Phase 90. Let's have a listen. So those were my 10 best MXR pedals ever made. Now, as I said in the beginning, I'm not going from newer MXR pedals. Of course, Dunlop and MXR still release pedals under the MXR name and reissue a lot of the classic effects that MXR made back in the Rochester, New York days. Of course, if you want to add to this list, put some honorable mentions in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you how you might rearrange my list of 10. If you maybe would reorder some things, add or subtract some certain things, please do put that in the comments. Again, I would love to hear your opinion on this. And if you want to continue your education along the lines of guitar pedals, gear, what order to put pedals in, how to build pedal boards, we have lots of different resources available to you, whether that's on our podcast, which is a free way for you to engage with us, where we go over a lot of this stuff on all the common podcasters at Spotify or Apple Music. And you also have the ability to join us over on Patreon, where we have various paid services that can be as simple as just doing weekly live streams that are private for our Patreon group, or you can pay for a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we can go through your rig and help you optimize things so that you can really build the board of your dreams. Also, if you're interested in the pedals that we manufacture or our pedal boards, you can head over to vertexeffects.com where we have all of our different pedals listed and all the dealers that sell them, 
or if you're interested in getting pedal board materials and supplies, we offer all that over on the rigdr.com and you can purchase anything like cables, Velcro, zip ties, tie down mounts, all the stuff that we use to build pedal boards. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure that you like, subscribe, ring the bell icon so you get notifications every time we come out with a new video. And until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, AKA The Rig Doctor. Those are my top 10 MXR pedals ever made. I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.